The rumors are flying. This is coming from Bounding Into Comics. Rumors Zack Snyder's Justice League will still lead to new DC projects on HBO Max despite studio pushback. Despite the various contradictions put forth in entertainment media, Zack Snyder's upcoming cut of Justice League for HBO Max is still set to springboard numerous sequels and spinoffs for the fledgling streaming service, even though not everyone involved may be on board or even aware of it. Before we get into the article, definitely a big help to me. Subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications. Back to the article. Mikey Sutton of Geekosity claims his sources revealed to him that the Snyder Cut will be the beginning of several possible spinoffs set in the DC Extended Universe, with WarnerMedia AT&T viewing it as foul grounds for new programming. That is absolutely believable. It's absolutely something you would think that HBO is ready to do in two seconds, is if they have any kind of momentum, any kind of success, they will invest in more spinoffs tied to other projects. Why? A successful spinoff is something that will even draw attention back to where it got spin off from. You know, there'd be no Marvel Comics universe if the first couple of Marvel titles weren't a hit, if that universe wasn't successful. Then when they have additional titles, those additional titles draw interest to the other titles because people go looking for more. So it's momentum, it builds on itself. Now, this is contrary to other reports calling the Snyder Cut a narrative dead end that, and I heard that one, that are based on solely from a comment in the New York Times piece about DC Films head Walter Hamada, Walter Hamada and the future state of the DCEU, in which the news outlet wrote that, quote, at least for now, Mr. Snyder is not part of the new DC Films blueprint. Probably something he shouldn't have even spoken to if you think about it. And that DC Films blueprint did include Wonder Woman, and Wonder Woman has not been well received. Some people liked it. There's a scene or two that's kind of cool in New Wonder Woman, but uh, it's gotten terrible ratings. It's the worst rated DC Comics Universe movie so far in terms of audience reaction. That's not good. So it's probably time for a new blueprint. The Times added that studio executives had described Snyder's HBO Max project as a storytelling cul-de-sac, a street that leads nowhere. But... Are those studio executives even still at the studio? They fired like tons of people at Warner Media throughout the entire Warner Media and all its divisions, especially DC Comics, especially in the studio. Sutton accuses the sites running with that last bit of cherry picked information and taking it out of context in order to create doom and gloom write ups, thus ensuring maximum clicks for ad revenue. He writes very boldly and quite accurately. It's a common practice using bogus claims or rage-inducing speculation to pull the emotions of fans in a downward spiral, ensuring plenty of social media shares as they distribute their angry reactions to thousands of others. That is true. You know, whatever creates hype on social media or creates attention, and attention can be sales. Sutton counters that the Times clickbait cynicism is all bullshit and stresses his belief that parent company AT&T is taking a wait and see approach with the Snyder Cut. That's very believable. Very believable they're gonna wait and see what works and they're gonna kinda of see even if it works really well, is this something they can do more with? Or isn't it? You know, it, it's gonna depend on a lot of factors, uh, but they're certainly gonna be looking at anything that's successful. They're gonna look at all the numbers. He also speculates that the nameless executives expressing their doubts towards the Snyder versus future were most likely the same personnel who wanted nothing to do with the Snyder Cut then patted themselves on the back when it became official and thanked the fans while puking in their mouths and they followed uh, directives from their AT&T bosses. So, you know, the people that didn't want to release a Snyder Cut obviously are not going to support anything to do with the Snyder Cut. AT&T wouldn't plunk down $70 million on the Snyder Cut without expectations of following it up, said Sutton. That's not how Hollywood works. It's all about money. If the Snyder Cut is a hit... Its success will prove there's a market for more. HBO Max is so desperate for subscribers and competing against the mammoth Disney Plus machine. That is absolutely true. Disney Plus has done amazing, and um, Warner Media wants a piece of that. They don't want to get left behind. Um, you just have to kind of wait and see. But AT&T is willing to spend $70 million on the Snyder Cut. They're willing to spend an extra $50 billion on DirecTV. Whatever it takes... They actually do have a lot of cash over at AT&T. 
Um, they will spend money if they see something works. They're dying to spend money. Sutton further notes that if the Snyder Cut begin, brings in the numbers, audiences should fully expect those same executives to meet Snyder back at the negotiating table and try to make a deal. Due to the conflicting assessments on top of the gross cherry picking, it's obvious there is a misunderstanding. While the New York Times article makes mention of Snyder, its main focus is on Hamada's experience in managing DC's film releases rather than any specific plans for the DCEU's future. A large amount of confusion could be attributed to the fact that HBO Max is being looked at as a platform for any number of DC projects in the coming years. Hamada, making no secret of the streaming platform's priority, noted to the Times how with every movie that we're looking at now, we're thinking, what's the potential HBO Max spinoff? It's the same thing they would do with sequels. It didn't used to be that every movie had a potential for a sequel. Now, almost every movie, even movies that don't have a potential for a sequel, they're trying to do sequels. And and it, before sequels, it was merchandising. They were like, okay, Star Wars was a huge merchandising hit. Nobody expected that, the original Star Wars. Uh, and after that, it became like merchandising. What else can we do for merchandising? So merchandising, sequels, and now HBO Max spinoffs. Why not? Given Wonder Woman's 1984 premiere on HBO Max and the announced development of The Peacemaker and the Batman's Gotham prequel series show that the platform presents as a major disruption to thus far traditional avenues of film distribution, though it's obvious that industry insiders don't want to let go of so much as dilute the classical theatrical model. They really don't have any choice. This is what they say, but what are they going to do about it? Not a hell of a lot they can do. The risk is, will watching these movies first on television degrade the entertainment experience and later the value, says David Gross of Film Consultancy, Firm franchise entertainment research to the Times. That is the risk. Um, absolutely, it is going to degrade um, the theatrical experience. But the studios are making a trade-off. You know, they're making a decision that hey, it's more important for us to build our subscriber base direct to consumer than it is to focus on theatrical. And in the middle of a pandemic, who wouldn't do that? Uh, there's a couple that are not doing that. They're kind of waiting it out and seeing what happens. But you can understand them doing it. If Warner Media does not get momentum for its HBO Max subscription service, they are in big, big, big trouble. So they're already in trouble, uh, but they need subscribers. They'll do whatever it takes to get subscribers. For an individual movie, there's no more profitable business model than a successful theatrical release. Creating the biggest pop culture event possible, he, con uh, he continued. It's the locomotive that pulls the entire train. Merchandise, theme park licensing, and other income. It's absolutely true. You know, your brands are not important brands. For example, Bloodshot came out in the middle of the pandemic. Um, you know, it was an average movie. Um, it did not do well because people didn't get a chance to see it. Uh, so that what does that do for the Valiant universe of characters? What does that do for Bloodshot sequels? Well, it doesn't help. It certainly does not help. The Warners hasn't quite quit on theatrical uh, release entirely, despite their novel 20 to 21 direct to streaming release strategy, which is supposed to be for only a year and only for 17 films. But they are taking a wait and see attitude. They'll see what they decide to do. It's what are you gonna do? This fear of change could be what has downplayed the Snyder Cut's potential impact on both pop culture and the future interest in the DC extended universe. You know, the truth of it is, if the content is excellent, the distribution doesn't matter as much because people will talk about it, people will find a way. It's just hard to make excellent content. Speaking of excellent content, tell me what you think of uh, the Steiner Cut in comments below. Definitely love to see your opinions. I try to respond to every comment. I absolutely read all of them. And also, if you want to support my work, I publish comics. Um, this is my new project, The Mermaids. It's at epicmermaids.com. It's already fully funded. It is going to be shipping April 20 of 21. It's a full color ongoing series, and it's kind of like um, Game of Thrones with mermaids. There's a huge, huge cast of characters, and if you want to see the way that um, a top-notch book gets put together with a great creative team, um, I have a couple of writers. I had uh, two editors helping me on this, and... Um, uh, multiple artists doing designs and, and executing on the uh, sequential art on the inside. You get to see in the making of the Mermaids book the full script for all of the pages of the book as well as the rough layouts that we then approved as well as another 20 plus character designs and more full descriptions of the ongoing uh, series. It's really pretty amazing. And also you can check out collegeofthedead.com. It's my ongoing zombie apocalypse series.
There are links to both these books in the description. All right, I will see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.